What is up, my friends? My name is Echo Thrumian. Today I'm here with Lord Stark, one of my clanmates from Nova Elite Gaming. And today he's teaching us, giving us some pro tips on how to play the Hog Mortar decks. I know personally I'm excited about it because I plan to use Hog Mortar this season as it is a new season in Clash Royale. What I want to know, guys, are you excited to learn Hog Mortar? Let's jump into it. Here we are guys with Lord Stark and uh, his profile is right here in front of you. It's the beginning of the new season as you can see 4348 right now but like I said it's day one of the season. His all time high 5362 and one of the decks that we're looking at today is this Hog Mortar deck. It's a bit of a Hog Mortar Swarm deck and the other one uh, we'll get into in a few moments but before we get into that I want to jump it up to Lord Stark and say how you doing brother? Welcome to the show and uh, what's going on? Hey Echo, thanks for having me on. Glad to be here. Uh, not too much, hitting a lot of snow here in New York, but yes. just powering through on the ladder a little bit. That's what you gotta do, man. I got a lot of snow over here myself. So you have this replay for us right here, and then we're gonna also get into some live battles of him playing, and then he's gonna try and coach me and see if I could actually pull in a win with Hog Mortar. You ready to take a look at this first replay and let us know what's going on? Definitely, let's give it a look. All right, in three, two, one, and play. So what are we having here? We got Lord Stark in the bottom working his way up. Yeah, so I mean, looks like opening hand, I don't have a mortar, um, which I mean, I, I would ideally like to start out with kind of like a mortar, um, just see, feel out what they have or force them to play something to either block my mortar or just take the damage. I do lead off with the hog here. I kind of switch between starting out with the hog or starting with something like the spear goblins. I choose to go with the hog. He drops the E-Wiz. So already in my mind, I'm thinking he's rocking e -Wiz. He might be me rocking a Golem deck. He might be rocking a Graveyard deck. Those are the two main uh, decks that I'm seeing within the e right now. And I mean, sure enough, if you look above, he's, he's running a Graveyard deck. Um, this deck overall, I think, struggles a little bit with a couple of those, those cards I've seen a lot later, that Baby Dragon that he has. Uh, as well as uh, kind of like the the executioner tornado combination, I was I was seeing a lot. Um, so it's definitely something I was trying to work around. Um, here he's kind of I got him a little bit off cycle. He's he's dropping his e whiz behind uh, like without really any support. Um, and he's kind of dropping his his e whiz in, in some weird scenarios. And he has this bowler, which is just a huge problem for my for my uh, mortar. So uh, I always hate seeing seeing the bowlers, and I and I see him all the time. So. Um, I always know it's a tough matchup when I see that, so I'm just kind of feeling him out, trying to keep him a little bit off cycle. I figured out now that he's running a graveyard deck between the, the bowler um, and baby drag. I know it's not a go not a golem. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm sitting I'm sitting here. I, I don't don't have the mortar in my hand. I kind of just kind of just blew through it. Um, he drops this knight. I know he's going with the graveyard, and so I'm instantly thinking, how am I going to stop this graveyard? I don't have a poison or anything in this deck, so it's it's a little bit of a, a tricky play for me. But I drop that Goblin Gang, drop the Zap, take a little bit of damage, but he's uh, he's really just suffering in his Elixir count. But able to he's able to play that Tornado there and uh, really just kind of kind of stop my Hog from dealing too much damage. He's got like the uh, the anti Hog deck right here with the Bowler and the Tornado and the E Wiz. Yeah, this is this is uh, definitely why I chose to show this matchup. It's it's one of the more difficult matchups. He's got the tornado for the hog, and he's got the bowler for my mortar, um, and that baby dragon just does splash damage. I don't have any like solid defensive troops. It's all minion horde, uh, stab, uh, excuse me, spear goblins and, and goblin gang. So I don't really have that solid that solid defense that would do well against this deck. So. Um, definitely a tough matchup for me. I'm, I'm just trying to do the best I can to get a mortar lock because in double elixir, I know that my hog's not really going to be getting to the tower too much. He's got the tornado. He's got the bowler. He's got the e-wiz. Like, like there, he pretty much dropped the, the entire trifecta of, of yeah. counters to my, to everything. So that, uh, that mortar is able to kind of connect, get that last shot there for me. And his poison's not enough to, uh, to just take that time. down. Just in <laughs> yeah. time. Nice. Yeah. And, and you said that this was the end of the season, so we're talking about 5,000-ish cups on that one, correct? Right, right. That one, uh, I think I think I was around like 5,086 is I think what it says. Okay, um, cool. So yeah, so battling around the, the 5,100 mark. Nice. So I figure right now we'll jump into a, a live battle, and you can kind of let us know what you're thinking as best as you can while you're playing. Now, are you going to play that deck, or are you going to play the other option? 
Uh, I'll go ahead and run it with the, the Fireball Zap version. Um, okay. Slightly different deck. Uh, it's got a faster cycle. It's got the Knight on defense. Um, I think more consistently around the, you know, just around the metas and the, the different uh, the different buffs and balance changes that come through, it's slightly more consistent. So we can go ahead and see if uh, we can get some wins here on the ladder. Uh, right. I'll go ahead and j jump in a match now and if that works for you. That's fine. And the deck that we're talking about is showing on the screen right now, guys. That's also the one that I'm going to be testing out in a little bit. So, yeah, I'm ready. I'm going to be jumping in and let us know what you're thinking. I'll even cheer for you a little bit here. <laughs> Awesome. So I have I have a hog in my opening hand. I have the stab goblins and the bats. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the stab goblins. Um, just be a little passive with the hog. I, I don't like opening with the bats because they really they just don't they don't require a response from your opponent. They can uh, the tower can really just take them down. Whereas when you place the um, sorry I'm focusing. <laughs> I'm gonna hog the opposite lane. See what I can do to uh, stop him from putting together a, a big push. I would normally play my zap on that skeleton army, but I'm just I'm scared about what he's going to throw in front of that. Um, exactly, he throws that giant in front, and I think I'm just going to need my zap to deal with the uh, yeah that. So I zap, take care of both Hopefully. the bats, and I have my hog actually that I'm going to throw out in front of these stab goblins. I think he's a little bit low in elixir. He's got three, but I'm going to be able to get a couple good swings out of this. Almost yeah. a third, not quite, but still taking right. about a thousand tower damage off, so I'll take it. So do you like this matchup, or is this a tough matchup for you? Um, this is a tougher matchup than the deck that we just saw, because the other the deck that I uh, we just did a replay of has uh, Rocket in it, so the Sparky can be uh, annoying to deal with, but it's not the worst. I do have Zap, so... Um, it's it's not a it's not a, it's not that bad of a matchup. I'm fine with it. Okay. I know anytime I see Sparky, I freak out. I always struggle with it unless I have that uh, unless I have that rocket. Yeah, I um, I haven't seen a uh, like I don't know that I've seen his full deck yet. Uh, you probably have a better sense of that than I do. I don't know if he has like an executioner that he's still hiding or not. He's that not could... hiding anything. He's let them all show. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Uh, oh, he goes. He lets me get that uh, that mortar lock. So I'm gonna drop mm -hmm. my knight and support my mortar in the best way possible. Well played, um, right there. And that's that's exactly how you do it, right there. Yeah, and uh, I think with another another mortar shot, I'm getting close to cycling him out. So what I'm gonna do is just do my best to kind of pressure him into uh, not being able to put together the push that he wants. I'm gonna fireball this. This is turning into something I don't want to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, so I distract that, distract that giant, drop those archers, and I'm gonna be able to clean up this push fine. And I'm just gonna send in this hog with with 20 seconds left. See what I can do here to just take down this tower. Um, yeah, you're a zap There's away. A, yeah, exactly, a zap away. So I'm just gonna cycle. I mean, this is a 3.0 deck, so it does cycle pretty fast. He's got got a lot of stuff coming in, but I don't think he's gonna have enough time to uh, to really clean that up. And uh, he did have a lot coming in. Yeah. Yeah. And, now, um, I now my question, my oh, question yeah. is, I noticed that you played the mortar up at the river, but not in front of the bridge. What's the what's the theory behind playing it in that position? Yeah, sure. So he had so I had been attacking the left tower. And so I wanted to put damage on that and focus on that. And yeah. he had played the giant in the right lane. By putting it in the river uh, on the left side, the left tower is in range of my mortar, so I can deal damage on the tower that I'm already attacking, and I can pull his giant. Um, okay. So that's why I put it there. Got you. That's a play I never do that I need to start uh, incorporating, I think. You want to do one more live battle and see how it goes, and then uh, and then give me a shot at it? Yeah, sure. I'll jump in another one now. Okay. Um, but I'll say that, yeah, those tricky mortar plays where sometimes I drop a mortar, like, with things that are already in the minimum range, if I'm trying to get like one last hit, there's a lot of trick plays that you can do with a mortar, especially if you're running something with a tornado. I've like pulled units right on top of my mortar so that I can get the, the last like mortar shot on the tower. Um, oh, so there's a, a bunch idea. of things. Because the mortar doesn't strike when it's right on top. So right, it's right. So they'll range on it. Yeah, they'll drop like a musketeer or something and I'll just pull it in and get that last, that last shot I need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty good with hog, but with the mortar, I'm I'm still learning. So, yeah, this is good. Yeah. Nice value right there too on that fireball. 
Yeah, I figured. I'm hoping he doesn't have minion or these drops. I don't really have a great defense. I still, <laughs> my uh, mortar was my eighth card, so I still didn't even have that in cycle. Um, I might take a little bit of damage here, but uh, won't be won't be too too bad. He's committed pretty heavily to this push. He's dealt some damage, but I think I actually have um, enough elixir to, to turn this around. Yeah, his miner got some crazy chip damage on you. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> yep, sure does. Um, so I went ahead and, and, and zapped, went on offense there, um, seeing if I could capitalize. He has this cannon, so this is actually going to be not a fun matchup for me. Um, the last matchup, he didn't really have a defensive structure, so it was kind of um, wasn't too bad for me to deal with his giant, um, and then also just sending my hog when I needed to. But well, uh, oh, that <laughs> musketeer! I'm a second lead on that musketeer yep. locks on. I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna push push my luck here. I, I thought about supporting, but at the end of the day, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna regroup really quickly. Um, I'm gonna use the, the archers to, to try to help out with this uh, this miner. Missed on that zap. <laughs> this is a bad bad showing from me, but right. we'll uh, see if we can happens. turn it around. Now, did you get you did get the lock, but that musket's right there. Yeah, and he's gonna have the cannon <laughs> too. I do get two shots, but he was waiting for that hog. Yeah. I uh, just misplayed uh, in a couple different ways, but I, I still might be able to push this into uh, into overtime. Actually, we'll see. Confidence. So you got a I don't think decent he's... push coming right here. Yeah, he doesn't. He didn't have the cannon back in cycle, so um, unfortunately, I don't have rocket in this deck. Yeah. Oh man, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be just shy of that. Unfortunately, Two short. Yeah. <laughs> and a, and a, and the zap. Now, that's okay though because checking out a loss and breaking it down can actually help us as well. So a question that I had is, they took down your left hand tower, and you still placed a mortar in that lane even though they could drop their giant right on top of your mortar. Is that a, is that a tough play? I mean, how do you normally handle that? Would you handle it the same way? Um. Yeah, I mean, I would, that that wasn't really the mistake for me. I would handle it that way just mm -hmm. because, in my mind, uh, he has the cannon where, like, I think we were getting into double elixir, so my hog was going to be pretty ineffective. And so I already had about 1,000 or 1,200 damage off that left tower, and that's the tower that I really needed to take down. Right. So I... I kind of had to put my, I have to put my mortar there and put the offensive pressure on his left tower that I've already put some damage on. So um, there's no choice. That's where you have to go. So that's where you were. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's uh, yeah. I, I, I pretty much. I'm always going to make that play. If he doesn't have something like a cannon, I might lean more heavily on the hog. Um, but he had a fast cycle because he had like the the minions um, and he had a couple other faster faster cycle um, with the miner and the zap. So he was able to keep rel close enough with his cycle where he could keep that cannon down. So I kind of had to try to dual pressure with the mortar. Okay, that makes sense. Now, do you the, want me to? You want to guide me through a live battle, or or do you want to go into another one yourself? It's on you, whichever you prefer. Um. Uh. <laughs> uh we can we can go ahead and, and check out. Uh, why don't you go ahead and, and jump into a match, and I'll I'll spectate you, and we can walk okay. through it. All right, it'll make you look good, I'll tell you that. So I have the deck ready to roll. This is the deck that I'm going to be using right here, guys. And um, I'll go in on ladder pretty low, 4,144 right now, right at the right at the uh, beginning of the season, like I said. So I'm going to go in. Are you ready to spectate? Yep, I'm ready. Okay. I'll let you know what my starting hand is. Uh, it's a 12 v 11, so I have a small advantage there. And I have hog, knight, goblins, and archers. Am I going to go on a quick hog push right here? Uh, I normally I would, I would split archers in the back there. Um, All right. And it always works out well to, to mirror his play. You are under leveled with the archers, but... Now I have mortar. Should I throw the uh, mortar up in there? Uh, I would throw a, a mortar that's defensive, but can still reach that furnace. Um, so like somewhere in the middle. Okay, yeah, I got it. I was sitting on elixir for a little bit there. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, because it, it's always tough to play a mortar when he's already split archers and he can just support that. And then when you drop oh, a the furnace, push, right? Oh, he's yeah. got the bowler too, and I, yeah. I threw my hog right into that bowler. Yeah, it's. He, this is going to be a. a unfortunately, I think it's going to be a tough matchup for you because he's, he's also. Pro, I'm guessing he's going to have tornado as well. Um, I'm throwing my so, archers to try and clear out some of that mess there. Oh, graveyard he's got going. All right, he's got and he's got the poison, so uh, I'm gonna take some good damage right here. Yeah, I think you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose I your sure tower. I'm gonna lose a tower. Man, that was rough. Bad showing. I told you. I told you we'd have some problems here. I mean, this is just a this is just a tough matchup for you overall. Um, mm -hmm. he's got he's got a bunch of counters to everything. So I think, um, in this situation, you've only taken about 700 damage off of that right tower. Uh, Swap lanes. I would I would play on the on the left side, especially because okay. he's got the graveyard. And should I go with uh, Mortar right now? Uh, so I would Mortar the same way that you did last time. Put it in range of that Furnace. What you really need to do is you need to get that Furnace down and get him to kind of misplay his, his Bowler or preemptively play his Bowler and then capitalize with your Hog. Okay. Um, so seeing if you can get him to play his Bowler on one side, maybe you're Hogging the opposite lane. Um, but you want, you've got to take down that Furnace too because that Furnace is going to distract your Hog. So really that's uh, what you're trying to get your Mortar to do. I'm just I'd sitting on Elixir too much here also. Yeah. I didn't even, wasn't even able to take down that furnace. This is uh, brutal. So I'm going to go on the opposite lane with goblins and my hog rider. I got yeah, the he's five back, already. Uh, yeah, he's, he's got tornado, yeah. He does have yes. tornado. So yeah, this is, uh, this is GG for him right here. Not much I could do. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think when you enter double elixir there and you when you play that first mortar on that you play that mortar on that furnace, your goal there is really to cycle to a second mortar and okay. force him to play force him to play his bowler, and then you you kind of play your hog in in the best best way possible is, is I think the way that you handle that. So dropping your bats, your stab goblins, cycling back, um, and and doing what you can there to kind of get him off cycle. But even with that with that tornado as well. Yeah, you're brutal. You're really in a tough situation, yeah. Yeah. So, is this a, is this a good example of a, um, you know, what is what do you call that? A hard countered? I'm in hard countered here. Yeah, yeah. I, I think like, I, I think he has pretty much every every counter that you could <laughs> you could ask for. I mean, well, I'll give it another try. We'll see what I can get around this time. Yeah. I'm going into another one. Twelve v twelve. Yeah, and that guy was a level 11 also. Still, So I all I have are goblins, knight, bats, and fireball. I'm going to rush the goblins real quick. Is that a good good first play? Yeah, yeah. Goblins on the at the bridge. Yep. Yeah. Now um, Hog is he... in, my, in, my, in hand. Should I fireball those archers? Uh, no. You, it's too early for you to know if he if he has minion horde or not. Um, okay. And you, yeah. Yep. So, do, do you have mortar? I would be... I don't have mortar. It's okay. one of my last cards. So I just threw the bats right there. And I'm going to go with point. the hog right behind that knight should i throw mortar at the bridge as well no uh no um now i'd be prepping for how you want to deal with ooh so defensive mortar um and then archers yeah oh well, my mortar did not get down in time wow that was my bad. that's unfortunate um it sure is what uh what's in your hand right now you have knight and bats and my spells Okay. Um, probably play just the knight uh, behind the behind the tower. No. Right. Yeah. That's the that's the move. Okay. I have hog now, and mortar is, is coming next. So okay. I'm gonna have to go with bats right here to defend against this hog, and then I can go with border uh, mortar at the uh, at the bridge. Hopefully that's yeah. the right play because that's what I just did. Yeah, yeah. Mortar at the bridge. Um, Archers behind my knight. Should I go with a hog right now? Um. No, he's got mini Pekka in cycle, so I think your move is yeah. Goblins, no no hog. I would have usually rushed a hog right there. I think um I think what you gotta do is you, you gotta you gotta get your mortar down again and okay. kind of force him in like get an offensive mortar down. Um, I'm, do, I'm gonna get my knight and then I'm gonna pop the uh, offensive mortar right here. I got my arches right next to it ready. All right, he's got his defensive mortar. Yeah, so a fireball right there. Yeah, I would have I would have fireballed and, and caught the archers there too I, if possible. I was but, a little um, bit late on it. I, that was yeah, the plan. Yeah. 
But now he's played he's played his mini P.E.K.K.A. Um, unfortunately, your Stab Goblins went down, so that that's unfortunate. But this would be the moment to try to push really hard with with your Hog and and just everything. He's gonna have the uh, Mortar, mm -hmm. um, so you're gonna have to try to fight. Unfortunately, I think uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh man. It happens. Maybe I should not be playing this deck this season. I don't know. Definitely <laughs> struggling with it. I mean, it's it's just a matter of just getting getting comfortable with it. I mean, I, I think yeah. you know, just getting used to you know different win conditions. I can definitely play another uh, yes, an, another need, match. Need, you think? We need something because I need to learn, man. I need to learn. Okay. I'll go yeah. with my defensive mortar, but again, it is going to get down in time that time around. But you know, all a learning experience, which is good. Um, was that a mirror deck? He was basically playing the same deck besides the minions. Uh, he also had the mini P.E.K.K.A. instead of the knight, so, I mean, okay. it, was a si it was a similar deck, slightly slower cycle, I think, but, um, very similar deck. Yeah. Alright, so why don't I watch you, and, uh, and we can see what you're able to do. Alright, I'm jumping in a match now. Alright. Uh, my opening hand, I got, I got the archers, the fireball, the hog, and the knight. Um, okay. I'm just gonna split my archers in the back. Usually I wait, like, half a second. See, he, I see he drops the knight, so I'm actually going to drop uh, both my archers in the same lane. Mm -hmm. I, I have this knight. I'm uh, full of elixir again, so I'm just going to play this knight. I'm trying to figure out. Ooh. All right. Just going to fireball zap those Good bad boys. Nice. Good uh, advantage right there. Rough yeah. spot for him to drop those right there, so quick hog push. Yeah, very dangerous. Um, he drops that log, misses the hog, but um, I'm going to get three at least three yeah three swings yep. Yep. um so now it's just it's just a matter of me just making sure that i'm i'm playing smart around just three musketeers and holding um, on to those spells exactly exactly he's he's gonna split them in two lanes now but uh yeah i'm also he's gonna fire uh, he's gonna pump up so That's i'm actually question. gonna do you do you fireball the pump or save it uh i'm gonna save it uh because like in in bad situations, I can play the mortar defensively and handle the three musketeers pretty well in a lot of different scenarios. Um, and then I have the hog for offense if I need it. So I'm going to save the fireball for the three musketeers. And what I try to do is when he's pumping up is I try to put as much damage down on these towers as I can. Um, so that way I can just focus on defense and double elixir. Because it's tough and, to deal with those three muskets and double looks. Yeah, and especially if they have like pump leads too. Mm -hmm. This is tempting. This is tempting to me. I might actually. Um, he has this. He has this knight. So, so I can really give up. I can give up the first two pumps on his uh, on his pump because the fireball won't kill it. So I'm just waiting. He doesn't drop the three musketeers. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'll have to explain that after. But okay. um, yeah, I, I decided to I decided to pump that. Third, so now, is this a defensive mortar? mortar? Yeah, defensive mortar. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna drop a couple things right on top of that. Um, do what I can to distract in. these minions. Yeah, big push coming in. And that's a tough one right there. Good zap yeah. though. Yeah, he took that down pretty low. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just preemptively left. fire. You have this yeah. tower. Nice job with that fireball. Yeah. Um, he's gonna try to. I'm guessing he's going to try to drop, like, a mus Musketeers in the pocket here, so I'm actually going to play this a little bit defensively. Okay. And now I'm going to I'm gonna Offensive uh, Mortar here, because now I have Fireball and Zap in hand. Ready for those three Muskets. Exactly. And I'm kind of keeping myself around six Elixirs, so I can do what I need to. I am going to Zap these. I still have Fireball, so I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. You could expect three muskets soon, right? Oh yeah, he's he's waiting for he he's gonna try to drop them in the pocket, I think. Yeah, well, actually, with that so. with that knight in the back, he might he might try to switch it up. But it's hmm. tough to get that lock and double elixir because they could just always drop a card. Yeah. Right, there we go. He drops the three musketeers. I'm a little bit late on that fireball, unfortunately. I actually spent a little bit too much on that zap, mm -hmm. but. He's not going to be able to connect. This is probably going to end up in, in getting drawn out, to be honest. Okay. Nice play of the bats. Good value. And then last push right here. Archers in the pocket. 
Yeah, just doing whatever pressure I can to stop him from like just dropping his three musketeers down, mm -hmm. and it's gonna, just going to end up in a draw. And that's um, the key. Don't let him drop those three muskets. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge investment. It's similar to a golem, so if I can stop him from from dropping it, I can really control the tempo of the match. Mm -hmm. And I have I have the hog, I have the mortar, so if I just keep the pressure up, I can really control the what he's able to play. Um, the the What I was saying earlier about uh, choosing to fireball that pump, so... He had a knight coming down the lane, and it and he dropped the pump. And if I fireball, then he's gonna drop his three musketeers behind the knight, and I'll be in trouble. Okay. So I I waited until the knight crossed the bridge, and he chose not to support it with support it with the three musketeers, and then I fireballed because my fireball, even when he places a pump and I drop a fireball, he'll still get two elixir, whether I let him get the two elixir first and then fireball or if i fireball and then him get he gets the two elixir after it doesn't matter he's still going to get the two elixir right. so i waited to to stop him so that he didn't play his three musketeers and then i fireballed and the value is the same but by delaying that play i kind of stop him from taking my tower there okay that makes sense so i figure we'll sum it up right here uh, any tips that you have maybe a couple of tips about hog mortar in general that you want to give to everybody that they should kind of keep in mind obviously i had zero success today but it doesn't mean i'm going to stop trying um, but what would you tell everybody a, a couple of tips that you have in your back pocket with hog mortar that could show them a little bit of success yeah sure um so i think that the main tip is is understanding the the deck that you're playing against as soon as possible there's a lot of decks that you'll that you'll face where your hog might be a much stronger win condition than the mortar and sometimes vice versa so really understanding what deck you're going against and what win condition is going to be the the best strategy for you and in, in adjusting that way and then also um you know, don't be afraid to play your mortar on defense and stack your mortar. So even though it's got the mortar and the hog, when you play, when you get into double elixir and you play your mortar, you know, zap, bats, you know, go uh, stab goblins, you're already almost back to your mortar again. And right. you, uh, you get somebody in a lot of trouble if you get two mortars on the field and then you also have a hog coming down the lane. So, um, right, right. And uh, just always remember, like, I think I used to have a lot of trouble with, with this deck before I put the before the bats were put in because it just didn't have a lot of anti air, but um, I think you actually have a surprising amount of um, anti air with the bats and the archers and using the mortar for distraction. So um, really, like, don't be afraid to cycle through those bats and play them a couple times and, and use them on defense. Um, you can get some great value from them. Got it. Well, that's what the whole point of a cycle of deck, right? You have to have those cards that you can just kind of zip through so you can get back to your win condition. Right, right. All right. Well, I really appreciate you coming down, man. You gave some great tips. I'm going to watch this one back myself so that I can kind of take them and uh, improve my play. I definitely need to. So thanks for coming down. Any, any last things you want to say before you head out of here? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, first off, thanks for having me on. Uh, excited to watch your, your show this, this Sunday with, uh, with BBXH um, that you're bringing on. And also... Uh, if you want to see my content, uh, I am on Twitch streaming at twitch.tv slash lordstarkcr. Um, so okay. feel free to, to check me out there. Yep, and I'll be sure to link that down below in the description. Also, do you have a Twitter or social network that you uh, kind of hang out on? Oh, right. Yeah, I, I have a Twitter. Uh, it's also at lordstarkcr. I try to tweet there whenever I'm going live, uh, as well as kind of interacting with, with people in the community as well. So definitely... Uh, hit me up on there as well. I'm, I'm very responsive on that. As and a lot of the stuff that he has over on his Twitch, guys, are competitive matches that we have over here in the Nova Elite Gaming family. So a lot of great players, a lot of high-level gameplay that you guys can take a look at. It's definitely a fun stream, so uh, go check him out for sure. Again, those links are going to be in the description. But thank you all so much for coming down. I appreciate you hanging out with me and Lord Stark today. Hopefully you learned something, could watch this and kind of improve your play. I'm going to try and do the exact same thing. But uh, if you enjoyed your stay here, guys, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. And always remember, you can find me over on Discord, which I'll have the info over there, or on Twitter at Echo Through Me. And I'll see all of you back here again tomorrow. Until then, be good.